Hey guys, welcome back. Orbomb here, bringing you another set analysis review thingy, like whatever you want to call this, like first reaction plus set analysis kind of thing. So, uh, hey, we're back for another set. This is one of my favorite times of the year, guys. Like, we get this three times a year. You know, unless there's like shiny legends and you get the extra time you know what i mean and i'm pretty excited i love looking at new sets i love reviewing new sets i love seeing new potential decks because you know pokemon's interesting right like it's one of those games that like you you can love to death but it, it kind of gets stale like playing the same deck over and over again you know what i mean like playing the like because usually there's not more than like five decks that are like the best you know what i mean so once, like, it's nice that we get all these new updated cards and whatnot. But anyways, that's that's just me digressing. Uh, we're going to go over all these cards. Once again, in Japan, there are two sets that whenever they come to America, it counts as one set. So we get these uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. So yeah, we're going to go over most of the cards. I I'm pretty much, I've already looked, kind of looked over the set. And I'm not going to, like, go in depth on, you know, Yen Mega over here. Like, oh man, 70 HP Yen Mega. It's time. The future is now. You know what I mean? Uh, I am going to go over um, a couple different things here. And sorry about that, I just got distracted. But we're going to go over all the good cards, and that's about it, really. But I will talk about each card. Like, I will just highlight their attack, I suppose. But anyways, I, should, I guess I should get right into it. Drop a like if you have not already. So support the Or Army. Subscribe if you, if you, you know, if you, if you like Pokemon stuff, subscribe. That's always greatly appreciated. A Yen Mega here is, we do have a Yen Mega that ta can attack for free for four cards. Uh, flip a coin if it has to prevent all effects of attacks, clean damage on this Pokemon. Does the other Yen have free retreat? I feel like it might, I don't know, I don't think so. I don't think this card's any better though. Uh, it might be though, I might be completely wrong about that, who knows, right? Um, and here's the other Yen Mega, it doesn't, it's already not as good because the other one has free attacks. Uh, free attacks if you have four cards in hand, so I don't think this one's really worth looking at. We got Roselia and Roserade, fun fact, this is... Fourth gen is one of my favorite Pokemon. This is up there as one of my favorite. Fourth gen was one of my favorite generation. Is my favorite generation, I honestly think. And uh, it's one of my favorite Pokemon in that generation. I love Roserade. Too bad it's bad though. <laughs> 100 HP is already bad. Um, switch one of your opponent's Pokemon with their active Pokemon. The new active Pokemon is now poisoned. Uh, flower makes 100 damage. You may choose any number of grass energies attached to this Pokemon. Move them to your other Pokemon any way you like. Uh, it's two grass in the colorless, so it's not really worth. Once again, just having 100 HP is really bad. We have a 70 HP Turtwig and an 80 HP Turtwig. I mean, I don't care, but I know the other one has like synthesis and that's really cool and all. But like 80 HP on a basic? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. All right, that's cool. Grottle. Grottle. Uh, heal 30, whatever. Torterra. Now, I know that this one is, uh, is miss cut. Like it says 100 damage here, but it's actually 180 damage, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, I kind of like Torterra. I don't know. I don't think it's good by any means, but being able to, like, I guess, heal 80 if you attack <laughs> is something, like, you can use counter energy if you need to, uh, if you want to be that guy, you can play Torterra Venusaur, you already know I'm that guy, you guys saw that Executor video, <laughs> you can play Torterra Venusaur and just have two grass energy attacks, or you can play Torterra Venusaur Vickable, you know, go insane, <laughs> go insane, well, doing 180 damage is actually really cool for a non-GX attacker, but it is a very heavy attack cost. It involves, if you want to make it less heavy, it involves a lot of crazy combos, which I don't think are really worth it. And you're doing 20 damage to all your bench Pokemon, which you are going to have bench Pokemon. So, like, it's a yikes. Like, what if you play Lele? You're putting them in 150 range? That's horrible. And anyways, moving on. Uh, Cherubi and Cherim. First of all, I need to talk about this card in particular. This card gives me life. Look at how cute Cherim is. I've never been the biggest Cherim fanboy, but that card, that card, that card. It makes me feel at peace when I look at that artwork. Look at look at that Cherim. Anyways, moving on. It, it is pretty cool though, by the way. Each of your grass Pokemon has no weakness. That's that could be useful. Maybe if we get even more fire decks than just Volcanion, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> Carnivine, uh, Gobble. I just look at the artwork because people like artwork, right? Uh, gobble, heal 20 damage, whatever. Loom over 90 minus, attack the 10 damage for each damage count on this Pokemon. Nah, I'm good. Alright. So let's talk about Leafeon. I'm I'm talking really fast for no particular reason, but whatever. Let's talk about Leafeon here. I'm not a fan. Uh, I've had a lot of people. I've had I've had time to think about it ever since its release, right? And I know I've talked about it in one of those videos, but I don't think I'm a fan of Leafeon, honestly. Um, because like here's the argument, right? Until we make a new deck that could actually like here's here's my thing for Leafeon. I can see Leafeon being played in like a quad Leafeon deck almost, like where you can switch between your two Leafeons and use your ability to heal. I guess I should go over the card first. Uh, it is a stage one. Uh, 
GX EV Lucian, so you already know it's Grass DCE uh, for its attacks. Its GX attack is a single Grass Energy, which is decent. Its ability is cool. Uh, if this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, you may heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon with Energy Attachment. So it's actually not bad at all. Uh, if you play two Leafeons, you can switch between the two, between like Guzmas and Retreating and everything like that. So that's actually really dope. Um, but it's, it's 50 damage, and you have to have an Energy Attached, which is already kind of difficult to begin with. But it's not the end of the world, honestly. Uh, solar Beam does 110, which is uh, it's pretty cool. I actually like Solar Beam. I'm going to go over why I like Solar Beam in a minute. But uh, Grand Bloom GX is really interesting. For each basic Pokemon on your bench, search your deck for a card that evolves from that Pokemon and put it onto that onto that Pokemon. And so you're essentially evolving a basic to its stage one. You can't evolve like a Rowlet all the way to Decidueye or anything like that. But you can evolve it to a Dartrix, which means you can evolve it to Decidueye the following turn. It's interesting, but the issue with Leafeon is that if you're, gonna, if you're going to... Make your strategy revolve around getting off this GX attack turn one. You need a lot, and you're never guaranteed to get it, right? Because you're going to need a bunch of grass energies. You're going to need four EVs, uh, lots of Ultra Balls, Nest Balls, Pokemon that can retreat for free, maybe some Float Stones, uh, definitely Bridget's. You know, you have to guarantee that turn one Grand Bloom GX. And then you also have to have a bunch of Pokemon on your bench that can abuse uh, Grand Bloom GX, you know what I mean? So you're gonna need to have your Bridget, uh, you're gonna need to have more than just, because like, you, ideally you wanna evolve all your Pokemon, right? So you wanna have one bench space for Lele, and then you wanna have the other four Pokemon as Pokemon that can evolve. And I know people are talking about this in Zork Decidueye. I don't like it just because you have to play more Grass Energy. <laughs> Which you already play like two energy, three energy in that deck, maybe four if you're, you know, crazy. <laughs> so, uh, you know what I mean? I'm not a big fan of it. Maybe there's other decks that can make it work. I do like the idea of playing Leafeon GX with things like the Promo Lorantis and your other Leafeon and other EVs on the bench, and you can just evolve into your other EVs uh, into Leafeons, evolve your uh, Full Mantises into Lorantises, and then, you know, it's not that big of a deal because you are going to be playing four EVs in that deck. Uh, and. The Lorantis promo means you're doing 20 more damage. So you can turn this 110 damage into like, what, 130, 150, with Choice Band that's 180. That's pretty cool. Being able to hit for 180 for a Grass CC, that's definitely efficient. So I like Leafeon in that aspect, but in the other aspects, I'm not the biggest fan. You know what I mean? Anyways, I'm done ranting about Leafeon. <laughs> These Rotom decks are super cool. I actually can't wait to play them. I don't think they're great by any means, but the ability to attack for free if you have nine tools in your discard pile is pretty dope. Uh, people are talking about uh, playing it with things like Pumpkin Bomb, Gorgeist. I think there's some potential in that. I'm not too sure how I feel about it quite yet. I have to test it out first, but to play nine tools, that's a lot of tools. You know what I mean? Like you have to play your Choice Bands, your Bursting Balloons, your Assault Vest, your Muscle Dumbbells, Fighting Fury Belts, which you're not... Uh, I guess you could play Fighting Fury Belts in this deck, huh? A little bit more extra HP, but ideally you play choice bands just because uh, being able to hit for was a 90. That means you're hitting for 180 after weakness. That's pretty nice. So I mean, like I'm in the air about this. I definitely want to play around with it a lot because it seems like a lot of fun, right? I mean, that, that's this is the this is the kind of deck that I'm a big fan of. Like just playing fun decks. Uh, this one's really cool too because you can discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. So that's already a very useful attack. And 90 HP isn't bad. I mean, there are a bunch of non-GX attackers. And if you play with Pumpkin Bomb, like you're doing a bunch of damage on the board before you get, before you start blowing things away with Rotom. So there's that there's that thing. That's pretty dope, right? We got Shaman here. Shaman is another beacon Pokemon, but it's a pretty powerful beacon. It is a one energy attachment. It is a one retreat though, and it does have 80 HP, which is already so much better than uh other things, but Vulpix does have free retreat, or not free retreat, a free attack. So you can actually set up your bench and then Guzma or Floatstone or something like that. So there's that weakness, but Shaman does put things directly into your bench. Uh, you can search your deck for three basic Pokemon of different types and put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. So they have to be different types, which is the stipulation, but there's a couple of decks that really enjoy that. Like, uh, what's a good example? I don't know. Like, you know what? I, I can't think of any right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I was gonna say the Sidewise Zoark, but you're only playing Dark and Grass, right? Unless there's like, unless you play the uh, Leafeon variant, then you can put Dark Grass Colors. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Um, Shaman's cool. I like Shaman. We got Magmar here, a low HP Magmar, which is kind of weird, but uh, 80 HP Magmar. Um, nothing interesting here. Magmortar is pretty dope. I'm not the. I, I'm like the anti magmortar fanboy it's literally one of my least favorite designs if this pokemon is your active pokemon is damaged by an attack this attack is now burned the po the attack pokemon is now burned so that's cool i guess you can burn your opponent uh 180 damage discard two and then you're doing another 80 so you can do 160 which is kind of dope for three energies but you, know, you have to discard and it's stage two and it's 130 hp and it's a three retreat cost all the other stats kind of suck so i'm not a big fan of it 
We got some chimchars. I love chimchar. Look at that. He's got like a little fire face. He's a little fire face. Look at he's so cute. He's on spear pillar. Look at him. They're both 60 HP. Uh, it's whatever. They're both one retreat. It doesn't really matter. We got Monferno here. The, 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 you can burn your opponent and do 20 damage. And Monferno looks very angsty. So you already know I'm a fan. <laughs> we got Infinite. First of all, that artwork is super dynamic. And I love it. I absolutely love this artwork. Um, Infinite Ape is 130 HP, which is so sad. You know, we first of all, we didn't even get GXs of these cards. And now you make them low HP like this. At least Torterra had 180 HP. Ugh, whatever. Infinite Ape's cool, though. Your opponent's active... Your opponent's active Pokemon takes six damage counters from burn between turns. So, one question that I have been asked is, does it stack? No, it does not. Because it's not saying six more damage counters, it's just saying take six damage counters. So if you have two Infernapes, they're still taking just six damage counters between burn, between turns. But that's really cool. <laughs> that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Uh, 50 damage, your opponent's active Pokemon is not burned. So you can force them to be burned with Burst Punch. Which is pretty dope, I suppose. So let's just, just do some math here, right? Like if you're doing 80, 50 damage uh, with 60, that's 110. With 80, that's 140. Uh, if they stay burned, that's 200. If they don't switch out. It's not 210, which is really annoying, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm still waiting for there to be like a stadium that's like Furbank, but for burn. That way we could abuse cards like this on like Entei and stuff like that. But right now it's whatever. We got another Rotom. They all have the same ability. I just have to keep that in mind there. But this one does 80 damage. That's cool, I guess. 210. Uh, 220 if you choice ban a weakness, which is pretty do which is pretty dope. So there's that. We got Salandit, Salazzle. Uh, nothing really new here. I just love Salandit. It's a dope Pokemon. Salazzle is really cool as well. Uh, your opponent's active Pokemon is now Burn, Poison, and Confused. Meh. It's an attack. If it was an attack, it'd be cool, but it is an attack, so that's kind of annoying. Turtonator. Dude, why is there a Turtonator in every set? We have, like, five different regular art Turtonators. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, it's whatever. It burns. More burning. All these cards can burn, but burn's even that, not even that great right now. Uh, Murkrow. Murkrow. It's a, such a dope Pokemon, bro. Uh, I'm the head haunch crow right here. I'm the head haunch crow. I'm just kidding. Um... It's, first of all, the artwork is dope because you got Cyrus and all the uh, Plasma or Galactic people. So that's pretty dope. Uh, Surge Snatch, discard a random card from your opponent's hand and switch, whatever. Uh, mean Look, the po defending Pokemon can't retreat during your opponent's next turn. Yeah, okay, that's whatever, moving on. Sneasel, another fan favorite, dark type. That is the sassiest looking, look at that Sneasel. He's like, yeah, I'm Sneasel. You know you love me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. that is the sassiest Sneasel. Yeah, once again, all the all the Cyrus, all the Cyrus love. Stealthy Smash. You can only use his attack. You can use his attack only if you go second and only on your first turn. Discard an energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. So you can't use his attack in any other situation. That's so lame. Uh, but you can discard an energy from your opponent's Pokemon. So I guess that's cool. And it doesn't have to be their base active. They can be their bench. But like you have to go second. <laughs> which is already something you don't want to do because you want to evolve right away because this Weevil is actually super dope. Uh, I think I've talked about it already. Maybe I haven't, but it does 50 damage times the number of uh, blah, 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 times the number of your opponent's Pokemon with abilities. So at most you can do 300 damage, right? 330, I suppose with choice ban. 90 HP is already not, it's not that great, but um, think about what, think about what's good in the format right now and what's probably going to be good, right? You have, um, you have Sol Galeo, right? Sol Galeo is going to have both different Sol Galeos, which both have abilities. Tapu Leles, and potentially... Well, that's about it, really, right? So their whole bench is probably filled with Pokemon with abilities and nothing else. Maybe they have the Prism Sol Galeo as well. I doubt it, but maybe they do. Maybe they have a... No, they probably will have a one of. But other than that, you're probably hitting that 200, 250 number. But at the same time, they could also just not bench their Pokemon. You know what I mean? <laughs> they could choose not to play as many Leles. But sometimes it's like out of their control, so that's really cool in that aspect. Uh, you have things like what else is really good? Glispot Zoark. I mean, they're forced to not play Zoark, which is already disruptive enough. But I mean, like you're probably not taking knockout anyways, because they need to have four Pokemon abilities, which means they have to have like two Leles, two Zoraks down. Meh. What else is good? Uh, Gardevoir. Gardevoir is cool because Gardevoir, Gallade, Lele, Octillery, they all have abilities. So, but once again, there's resistance. But if you have a choice band, you could probably play around the resistance as long as you. Uh, as long as they have four Pokemon down. And uh, there's that aspect. But Gardevoir is probably going to see a little bit less play. We'll see. Well, it depends on how good this metal actually is. I don't want to jump ahead, jump jump to conclusions and say it's the best deck ever. Um, but there's a lot of cool aspects that go with it. But, I mean, Weavile is cool. Like, the Sidewise Ulrich, they all their Pokemon have abilities. 
<laughs> every single one of them. So except yeah, even the, even the other the Russian Zorak that has an ability as well. So like that's really cool. I like Weavile. Weavile is pretty dope. I think any deck that plays dark should consider t trying this out because um, it is a dark energy. Maybe if you play rainbows or something like that, you might want to try it out. Who knows? We'll see how good it is. The other Weavile is cool because it does 60 damage to all your Pokemon opponents, Pokemon with abilities. So you can play like quad Weavile and uh, we can, if, assuming they don't, like then they, if, if they do play around the fact that they don't put down all their Pokemon with abilities, you can attack with the other Weavile doing 60 damage to all Pokemon with abilities, weakening them so that this Weavile can come in and just take the knockouts when it needs to. Um, but then again, late game is kind of tough because when they lose Pokemon, you're losing damage. So I don't know. It's, it's, it seems like a cool concept, right? We're definitely going to try it on stream and stuff like that. So come out, subscribe. We do stream almost every single day. A bunch of different TCG, TCGO decks, and we do battle viewers and things like that. So just a little, little self-plug. We got some we got some Stunkies. We got some Smelly, smelly Skunks. Smelly Skunks. Uh, they don't really do anything. Sticky Smokescreen. The, the defending Pokemon tries to attack during your opponent's next turn. Your opponent flips two coins. If either is heads, attack does nothing. I, I guess that's cool. Whatever. Moving on, though. It's a... It's a through retreat only 120 hp 120 hp is like the worst hp number because this spot knocks you out <laughs> we got dark rai prism i'm not a big fan of this card to be 100 percent honest uh i think it's kind of cool in turbo dark just because you can play down and attach two dark energies from your hand so if you ever in one of those situations where you have too many dark energies in your hand you could uh ultra ball and then like grab the dark rai star and then or dark rai prism and then play it down and attach two then manny attach to something else and that, that helps with your dark rai um with your Dark Pulse Darkrai, I suppose. But the issue with Darkrai is that you have a lot of bench space that's being taken up. You already have Darkrai GX, which is like enough, you know what I mean? And expanded, you have Dark Patches and Max Elixirs. You're not gonna be put in a situation where you need to put down this Darkrai Prism a lot. Uh, and it's Abyss of Sleep is really cool, but it doesn't do enough damage and it doesn't, and it's too many energies. It's also still weak to fighting. It still has a two retreat, so. Would I play this in a Turbo Dark deck? Probably. Would I play Turbo Dark? No, probably not. <laughs> Turbo Dark's still really weak. This doesn't help Turbo Dark at all by any means, so we're gonna move on. We got a Lowland Diglett, a uh, little, 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 little pub. He's a little, he's a little man. He's a little man. 50 XP is really bad, but it's free attack, so I guess it's cool. Flip a coin to still get tails. That's 10 damage for each hedge, bro. I'm gonna knock out a uh, Sogaleo with this. Watch me. I'm gonna switch the 25 heads. Actually, I don't even need to. I just play Choice Band, right? Then I only have to flip 22 heads. We're doing it. <laughs> That's the goal on stream. And then we have this one. By the way, it's only 60 HP, so there's only like a 10 HP gain. So that's something to worry about. Like, look at him. Whatever, anyways. Discard as many metal energy from your hand as you like. His attack does 30 damage for each energy discarded in this way. I guess that's cool. You can play cards like Fisherman. We have Mount Cornet, which we will go over later. Uh, I don't know if it's in this. It should be in this set, right? I don't remember if it's in this set or not. But it's a stadium card that puts two metal energies from your discard pile to your hand. And you play Fisherman. That's another four. <laughs> so that's six. So uh, was it? That's 180 damage right there with choice bands 210. I guess that's cool, but at the same time, like you have to put six metal energies in your disco pile, which is never that easy to do. So uh, something worth looking into, right? I kind of want to move my screen. Well, let me move my screen. We're gonna do a midstream, right? Or mid mid video. We're gonna throw everybody off. We're gonna like just do, do. We're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. All right. Now it's gonna throw everybody off. That way, whenever I do this, it's a little bit less awkward. I don't have to move it as much, even though I still have to move it. Whatever. Um, we got more Magnemites for our... It's so super cool Magnezone. Um, we got 60 HP, 60 HP, lowest 60. This one searches your deck for 3 mana energy and put them into your hand. It's whatever. Like, your opponent can end you. But it's still, it's, still, it's still something, right? You can't really dog on it too much. Uh, then you have this one, which... Uh, this Pokemon... If this Pokemon's on your bench, it takes no damage. Uh, that's really cool as well, <laughs> especially with the evolution Coco. Um, so I think this one's probably worth playing. There's also the other Magnemite. I don't know the other the other Magnemite's cool. I guess you can play both, right? Because it gives you free retreat, and if you need to, you can play the second one on the bench. So there's like that benefit. The other one gives you free retreat. There's two Magnemites, I believe. It's in Breakthrough, so that's something worth talking about. Uh, Magneton, 90 HP. Does 90 damage, 80 damage, and you can't attack, whatever. Then we got Magnezone here. Good old zone. Does the same exact one the Electric Zone does. Uh, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So that's really cool. We do have, like I mentioned earlier, the new stadium, energy retrieval, Brid uh, not Bridget, uh, Fisherman. We have lots of ways to put energies back into our hand. So there's that benefit. There's a Pokeball there, and it's bothering me. Can you go away? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> it does have two retreat, though, which is two, which is one less than the other one. 
So there's that benefit. This attack does 130 damage. I don't know if that's less or more than the other Magnezone, but regardless, you're usually not attacking with this thing. It's just a way for you to attach metal energies. We do have a bunch of Pokemon that could abuse it, so we will. I will be talking about them when we get there. We are, we are going to get there soon. And um, I mean, there's Pokemon standard that can abuse it right now. Like think of uh, Genesect. Genesect EX really likes this card. Uh, excuse me. Uh, anyways, yeah. So there's that benefit as well. Uh, we have some other Pokemon. We got Shield on here, which evolves from that state from that new fossil thing that's like a basic pokemon that's an item it's interesting um so there's that cool part it has 100 xp it kind of like a stage on it. i mean it's it's dope don't get me wrong we have basio down here which is actually a really cool card another metal support card 160 hp pokemon it's stage two stage one whatever you want to call it because you could play the other basio down which is considered a stage one and still make it work um prevent all damage done to this metal from your to your metal pokemon from the attacks of your opponent's Pokemon with any special energy attached to them. So, like, there's a lot of decks right now that only play special energies. Lots of Zoroark decks that do it. You know, things like that. So there's that benefit. You get to protect yourself from those decks. If it gets to a point where we absolutely need this card in Metal decks, I guess you could play it. But I don't think it's actually that necessary. 110 damage. You may have your opponent switch their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. Push down. I, I could just imagine Basketball just like, just like saying, hey, go away. It's like, he's just like shoving you with his head. Like, you, you gotta go, bro. Like, just leave leave <laughs> uh we got bronzor and bronzong um bronzor 60 hp puts your opponent to sleep i guess that's dope um bronzong 110 hp eh. the artwork is cool i like the artwork uh side bolt flip a coin of hedge opponents paralyzed that's cool i guess psychic resonance it has any second pokemon plays attack to 60 more damage eh, meh moving on heatran i liked heat i would have liked heatran if uh we didn't have all this metal support that scared away guardy because Heatran is cool, right? Because you have 130 HP Pokemon that does 130 damage. So you have an attack that can Oko Guardies with weakness without the need to, like, uh, play tools. So there was that cool aspect to it. But eh, now it's not that great. Just because there's already a lot of things I can deal with. Like, there's already other cards I can deal with Guardy. If Guardy still stays popular, still stays relevant, like, if you play, like, Silk Valley Metal, this is probably something you can consider putting in Silk Valley Metal. Uh, it's still weak to fire though, so that's like whatever. Discard two energy from this Pokemon. It's still good though. Like 130 damage, any damage under this Pokemon by attacks during your opponent's next turn is reduced by 30. I guess that's cool. Overall, it's not bad. Uh, we got Solgaleo. This is probably the best one out of all of the Prism cards, in my opinion. 160 HP, decent HP number. Three retreat cost sucks. Weak to fire sucks. Resistance Psychic's not bad. Um, you can only play one in the deck, but its attack is really cool at any point of the game. For each of your opponent's Pokemon play, attach metal energy from your discard pile uh, to your Pokemon any way you like. So you're always attaching one. But in most cases, just considering the, the stage of the game right now, a bunch of stage two decks coming out. And when you're playing stage two decks, you want to have as many of your state of your basics as possible on your bench, at least two on your bench. So you're usually attaching three from your discard pile. Uh, as long as you have the energies in your deck, this card's always worth, in my opinion. Um, it's one of those things though where like you have to play down the Sogal So there's like there's pros and cons when you're playing uh, these Prism cards, right? Like if you get them early, you have to put them on your bench no matter what. And sometimes because like and you don't have to, but uh, if you're ever going to Sycamore or anything like that, you're gonna have to. <laughs> and you know everybody has to play Sycamore, so there's that. So you know what I mean? But like it's a really cool attack. You can even attach the energies to yourself because you do 160 damage as a basic Pokemon. So like, if you're gonna be put, if you have to put, a, put, you have to put pressure on your opponent with a Pokemon that won't give your opponent two prizes, this is the way to do it. You attach the energies to yourself. Now they have to deal with you. Uh, but if they deal with you, it's only a one prize attacker. So it's like, man, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're not losing, you're ultimately not losing. So it's pretty cool. Not to mention the artwork is just super dope on this card. Like, I really like the fiery background. I'm not gonna lie. Darkman Necrozma GX was the card I was talking about when it came to that Magazine card. This card's pretty good. There's there's just so many good, so much good to this card that I, I just love it. Um, now, I'm probably not going to play this deck just because I'm, I'm too hipster to play really good decks, but <laughs> I'll play it on stream a lot, and then if I like it a lot, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but regardless, 68 damage for 3 energies is pretty bad. Meteor Tempest is 220, 220 damage, and you discard 3 energy from this Pokemon. Now, there's a bunch of ways you can work around this. First of all, you do have the Magazine, like you did mention earlier. So if you manage to put 3 more energies into your hand through your Mount Cornet, or like maybe drawing an energy or something like that, that's really dope. 220 damage is a lot of damage. With Choice Band, you're doing 250. That knocks out everything. There's nothing I can think of right now that resists metal that can survive this hit. Maybe Electric types with like the Stadium and Fighting Fury Belt. But like, even then, like, what are you doing in return, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, 
Um, but 220 HP, that's a, that's too much, you know what I mean? Just being able to Oko everything with a relatively easy setup in our current meta is really terrifying to me. Even metal decks, like even though metal decks can come in and return knock, return knock you out, the only Pokemon that you can't knock out as far as like, um, as far as playing against Volcano variants go, are Belted Terminators and Ho-Ohs, but there's one simple fix to that. Uh, first of all, there's Choice Band, <laughs> and second of all, there's Delmize. You play a singular Delmize, and they and you like already knock them out with a Choice Band, so you don't even have to worry about playing Field Blower too much. Although you probably will be playing like three count of Field Blower just because of Garbodor, um, but like it's still pretty dope. Also, there's a whole idea of playing DCE in the deck, right? Because if you're playing DCE, your manual attachment is a dce and if you discard three energies you're discarding one metal and one dce that way the following turn when you do attack you can uh use your magnezone to get use your mount cornet which gets two metal energies from your discard pile into your hand and then since you already have two energies attached to dark main because you did to, to dusk main i mean um you can just attach the next two energies you know what i mean so it makes things really easy as far as attacking with the Crossbow GX. I'm sure there's other metal Pokemon in the there's there's other decks like this one like other like this card right here that actually likes DC as well, which makes it not even that bad of a card. Eclipse Sun GX is 250 damage, so if you don't have that choice band, if you want to take that big knockout, it's pretty useful. But you can only use this if you're like losing. So overall, it's not bad. It is a three energy attack, so if you can't seem to get your other energy onto this dusk this, this man you can just gx blow something up so it's, it's pretty dope i like it although if i were me if it were me i'd still be playing this dialga here because this dialga is super dope <laughs> i would honestly be playing this dialga with this uh, dusk main literally just for its gx attack you've got 180 hp dragon type pokemon weak to fairy but once again dick you don't care if you're weak to fairy because you have this <laughs> as the attack clock up draw until you have six in your hand so actually this is a really relevant attack because if you're stuck in one of those positions to where like you really don't have anything you can do your hand sucks you weren't able to get that turn one set up at the very least you can get dialga uh, you put one energy on the dialga and boom bam shablam you can attack for um you can attack for one energy and draw a bunch of cards so there's that benefit shred it attacks past effects of your opponent's active pokemon if we get any decent effects it could be something worth doing it um it could be something worth playing, I mean. Like, for instance, this actually hits past uh, Ninetales. I don't know how useful that is, because you probably play Magazone can attack with that, but it is something worth mentioning. But more importantly, you have Timeless GX here, which I do want to say that, like, people are complaining that it's not hard to pull off. If you are playing the Magazone and DCE build, it's actually not hard at all to pull off. Maybe you attach one energy preemptively to it, uh, and then the following turn, two energies, DCE attachment, boom, bam. 150 damage, and... Once, you're, once this turn is over, it's your turn again. So your opponent, if you, say that you like knock out 180 HP Pokemon because you play Choice Man. Like say you knock out a Drampa, right? Um, you knock out the Drampa, and then your opponent puts a new Pokemon in the active, and then it's your turn again. So you take two prizes and you draw for the turn. That gives you three whole new cards that you can do anything you want with while your opponent's sitting there having no way to punish you for taking a knockout. You know how like there's those situations to where like you can get into... <laughs> It's like, uh, like I think about it, and like it actually infuriates me, like how cool this could be. Imagine this, right? You play the, you're playing this Sogaleo deck, right? And you already took in, you've already taken two prizes. All right, so you've taken two prizes. You have four prizes left. Um, your Dialga, you draw it, you attach DCE, you use your Magnezone to attach energies to it, boom, and then you play Guzma, right? Like obviously that's a lot of cards to play, but overall it's not super super hard to pull off as long as you can set yourself up. You timeless GX. You have a choice man attached, you take a knockout, right? It's like a mid-game thing after you've taken your initial prizes. That's really cool. You managed to pull that off. You were able to take a knockout with Dialga GX. Now, all you have to do <laughs> is attack again with this Necrozma over here, right? And you just attack any GX Pokemon, and then you win. It's it's You take four prizes in essentially one turn, right? One turn where you draw extra cards. It's, it's so powerful to me now obviously this is just speculation it could be incredibly difficult to pull off what do i know right but from what i can tell it's not it's not that hard to pull off i'm sure you can have games where you can pull that off very nicely and then your opponent's rage quits and you lost a friend <laughs> i'm just kidding uh dialga is really cool i like dialga especially in that metal deck in other decks i don't really see it being a thing i think you have to play magazine to make this a thing but it's really cool in that deck so what can i say right uh, I want to make this video shorter, so maybe I should keep going. <laughs> Lick a tongue, lap up, draw three, whatever. 100 HP, 130 HP. Lick to death. Flip a coin of tails. It does 40 dam 50 damage for each head. If the first coin flip is tails, 
you're now paralyzed. That's pretty cool. All right, cool. So you're gonna lose paralyzed if you don't do the damage. That's nah, whatever. Uh, EV is not uh, evolution EV, so it literally does not matter. It's only 60 HP as well. Uh, we got Glam Meow and Per Ugly. Per Ugly is such a cool Pokemon. I don't care what anyone says. Look at him. <laughs> Look at that ugly. Look at that ugly cat. <laughs> Master of the house. 20 damage. Discard your opponent's stadium and play. If you do prevent all effects of attacks, including damage onto this Pokemon. That's cool. If your opponent plays a lot of stadiums, I guess. Cast aside. Discard a random card from your opponent's hand. Discard random cards from your opponent's hand until there are three cards remaining. Yo, that's actually super cool. <laughs> you know, I was looking at that Waylord deck that did really well at uh, the most recent expanded tournament. And it played like How, I think is the card. Not How. I forget what it's called. No, Hue. Hue, that's the card name. And it discards until you both have five in your hand, which is crazy because if your opponent, like, if your opponent, you're playing Mill, right? So usually you want to keep everything in your hand until you can late game end. But if your opponent hues you, then uh, you lose all those cards in your hand. <laughs> so I, I kind of imagine a situation where, like, that's happening. It, it, I don't know. It's, it's kind of cool, right? Uh, we have another Rotom here. It's a colorless Rotom, 70 HP, uh, does 20 damage to each opponent's Pokemon in play. It's Tapu Koko, but less HP. And more energy attack cost, but has the ability to attack for free. But it is a free retreat mon. That's kind of cool, actually. So I mean, like, it's just it's a little bit worse than Top Coco, except you have an ability. So uh, maybe maybe something worth playing. Oranguru, uh, put three cards from Disco Pop to the bottom of your deck. Uh, I know that pair is apparently really well to look at. It's a lot of work to like get whatever three cards you want, though. So I'm not too sure how I feel about it. We're gonna move on though. Here's some fossil I was talking about. It counts as um. I believe any fossil, bro. Like any fossil Pokemon can play this now, I think. I'm not too sure how that works. But the thing that's most relevant about it is that you can rare candy into your Basiodons and stuff like that. Like you don't have to evolve into Shield on then Basiodon. Because it's a Pokemon now, you put it down, it's a Pokemon. Uh, and then you can discard it if it's in play at any time. But <laughs> your opponent can still take prizes if they do knock this out. So there's something worth mentioning. But you can rare candy into it, which is really, really cool. And then some card, one card that I'm super excited about is Palpad. Bro, Palpad is back. We are out here. So Palpad shuffles two supporters back into your deck. It's not a VS Seeker. It's not nearly as good as a VS Seeker, but it is it is uh, resource management in a way you can put uh, supporters back into your deck. Imagine like you want more Acerolas, you want more Guzmas in the game. Late game, you play Palpad, you have more of those supporters. Now, how good is it? I'm not too sure. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if this actually changes the counts of supporters. In my opinion, I don't think you should change the count of your supporters at all. Um, but maybe you want to play less Guzma. Like, this is kind of like a way for you to play less Guzma. You know what I mean? That way, if you do stick more of them away, you still have Pop Pad to put them back into your deck later. So if we're like those Sycamore heavy decks, I would say definitely play this. Because you want to Sycamore a lot. And this is a way to like help you out. Because either you're discarding a Guzma or you're discarding a Pop Pad, right? Uh, very rarely you'll be discarding both. Whenever you do, that kind of sucks. But, uh, you know, it's, it's still a dope card. Definitely something worth playing if you are a supporter-heavy deck. We'll, we will see. Nest Ball reprint, which means we get to keep Nest Ball whenever in, like, 2019, I guess. <laughs> uh, Pokemon Catcher, that stays in the format forever. Missing Clover is awful. I do not care. Oh, boy, it looks like so much fun. You're going to Ranguru into it. No, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> You play either one Missing Clover or four Missing Clover at the same time. If you play one Missing Clover, look at the top card of your deck. Uh, if you play four Missing Clover, take a prize card. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Definitely going to be playing four Clovers every game, all the time, six times in a game. All right, we're going to move on. Cyrus is a really interesting supporter. I'm not the biggest fan of it, honestly. I don't think it's very good at all. Maybe it's like one of those things where if you're playing against Gardevoir, you might want to play it. Let me talk about it real quick. Uh, you can you can only have one in the deck, which means you can search for Lele, but once you discard it, it's gone. You can't get it back with Palpat or anything like that. Um, this card can only be used if your active Pokemon is water or metal. So, I mean, I'm a Ninetales player, so it's like, oh, what can I do, you know? Your opponent chooses two of their bench Pokemon, then shuffles their other bench Pokemon and all cards attached to them into their deck. <sighs> I think this hurts you more than it helps you in most cases. I mean, think about our current format, right? Your opponent's going to have Lele's down. Um... Maybe your opponent's going to have some damaged Pokemon on the bench. Who knows? I mean, you can't Guzma into Cyrus. You know what I mean? You can't choose what's going to be active. Maybe you play Escape Rope. Maybe you, that you're Escape Rope, dude. Who knows? But, uh, like, th th think of a Gardevoir player, right? When a po when your opponent has, a, like, two Gardevoirs, three Gardevoirs set up, uh, well, first of all, one's probably going to be active, which sucks for you, which means you cannot shuffle, like, all their Gardevoirs back because they're usually attacking with the Gardevoir, right? Um, and two... 
if they were playing Gardevoir, like they just shuffle the other Pokemon that aren't Gardevoirs back into their deck, which means you usually free up their bench space for other Lele's and things like that. So uh, I don't think I'd play Cyrus. I'd have to take a look at the format, like, and like look at what's good and maybe Cyrus could be useful. Like imagine like everybody plays Metal, Sokaleo and things like that. You know what I mean? But like they don't need more than like, like imagine the Sokaleo that evolves, right? They don't need more than the one that turns off weaknesses and the one that can attack for big damage. And usually one of those two are active. So, eh, that's eh, how I feel about this card, eh. I was hoping these like Prism cards would be like super broken since you can only play a one of in the, in the deck, but it doesn't look like they're that broken right now. Gar uh, Gardenia, heal 80 damage from one of your Pokemon with grass energies. I guess that's cool. Uh, I mean, she looks good, look at her. She looks like she takes care of herself. Fan club reprint, I guess Bridge is gonna be gone so they have to reprint this fan club. Um, we all know what that does. Mars, Mars is looking kind of sassy. Uh, draw two cards and discard a random card from your opponent's hand. Uh, it's random, so it's not very good, <laughs> unfortunately, because you can't like delinquent into Mars because they're both supporters. So we got Lily reprint, so that's cool. Malcornet, here's the card. I did say talk about it a lot, but once per turn, <clears throat> each player can put two metal energies from their disco pile into their hand. So that's kind of cool. We got ourselves DCE reprint, whatever. Unit energy, uh, grass, fire, water, I can't think of any any decks off the top of my head. I haven't actually sat down and thought about it. Off the top of my head, I can't really think of any decks that this this card is super useful in. Uh, it's a special energy. It counts as grass, fire, and water. I, I can't think of any, honestly. So I guess we'll see in the future if there's anything that's like super useful for this card. Right now, I can't think of any. We got Full Art, uh, Gardenia, Gar Gardenia, yeah, Gardenia. She's very happy. Mars, she's very happy. They're all very happy people. Uh, moving on to the next set. We got some Sandshu action. Got an igloo on his back, carrying the weight of the world. Um, <clears throat> it has a free attack, fury swipes, it's whatever. Alolan Sandslash is 120 HP. Uh, he's looking dope. He's such a cool looking Pokemon. Like I'm not a biggest fan of him, but he's such a cool looking Pokemon. Spike Armor, 30 damage. This Pokemon is damaged by an attack from your post next turn. Play six damage counter on that Pokemon. So it's like Turtonator's attack. Hold on, guys. Give me two seconds. Sorry about that. Oh, I had to clear my throat. Oh man, <clears throat> uh, I guess it's kind of cool, right? Like you can put, you can uh, troll your opponent. You imagine this, like you don't have to attach energies, you just keep it using this attack. Uh, you play the other sand slash that gets you draw support, and uh, you just play cards like hammers and stuff like that. No energy attack deck, yay. It's whatever. I don't. It's, it's, it's cool, I guess. Something worth looking into. We got Empoleon here. We got the Pip Up Line. 60, 70 HP is the one that matters. 6 HP is such a bad HP number. 70 HP is where it's at. We got Print Plup here. Uh, it can paralyze. So I guess that's cool. But we have Empoleon. Empoleon's decent, for sure. Uh, it's a 2 energy attack. It's a water Pokemon, so you have access to Aqua Patch. 160 HP means it's better than Infernape, right? <laughs> 2 retreat is not great. But it does have the attack Total Command. 20 damage, the attack does 20 more damage. 20 damage times the number of Pokemon in each player's bench. So it's only the bench, it's not the active, so it's not like Zoark, but you can do 200 damage if both players have a full bench. You can only control the amount of damage you do so much though. Like you can only do like a maximum, you can only do like, you can only put up 100 damage if you can actually fill up your own bench. And your opponent can choose not to fill up their bench, you know what I mean? Like it's not like most decks have to pull that off, but being able to hit 230 after a choice band is pretty decent. Whirlpool, discard one energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. That's actually not bad if they choose not to fill up a bench and you can't fill up your own bench. And the disruption is always nice. 160 HP is pretty good, so I can't really knack it. it. It's still like in range of a Nine Tails knockout, which is meh, but it's still pretty cool. We got Weasel and Float Cell. Uh, it's whatever. Snover, what do we do? Dude, Snover has like one of the most relevant cries ever of Gen 4, bro. Everybody remembers that crap. Do do. <laughs> and we got a Bomb of Snow here. A Blessing of the Forest Covered Trees. That is a mouthful. 130 HP though, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may attach water energy from your Discord to one of your Pokemon. So it's Aqua Patch, but as an evolution, meh. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep for 80 damage. It's actually not bad at all. Like, <laughs> it's, it's still like a four energy attack. You only have 130 HP and your retreat cost is three, but like, it's not bad at all. But anyways, we're moving on to probably the best card in this set, dude. My favorite, my baby girl, my baby girl, the girl that's gonna help me so much in my for my water love to res to resurge and come back to me we've got 
Glaceon Jinx. I still need to get my secret rare water energies, bro. I wish I wasn't super broke. I gotta buy these Cynthia's first. Then I have to look into getting the water energies, I think. I really want them. If anybody ever wants to donate, maybe Christmas gifts, you know, hook me up with some secret water energies. I need eight. I love you forever. <laughs> <laughs> got 200 XP uh, evolution. So once again, attach water energy evolve into it. Uh, so this is one of those cards that like I feel like are it's just it's just really good, right? Uh, its ability is freezing stare. As long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, each of your opponent's Pokemon EX and GX in play in their hand and in their discard pile has no abilities. Crazy, insanity, really cool because then you uh, you opponent can't lay. It's, it's the biggest thing, right? Like if you use this turn one, if you EV and then attach a water energy then your opponent can't Lele turn one, which is already super disruptive. Um, your Gardevoirs can't abuse their abilities. Your Silgaleos can't use their free retreat. Their, um, your, uh, what else? What else is really popular? What else is going to be really popular? Your Decidueyes and Zorax can't trade and put their damage on the board. Like, there's a lot of good that comes from this disruption card, and we have to be careful because this card's going to be very, very, very scary for the format. Um, but... I mean, it's one of those things, like, do you just play more Bridgets? <laughs> do you even play Bridges at all? Do you just stick with, like, Sycamores and Cynthia's and hope for the best? Who knows? Its attack is Frozen Bullet, 90 damage, and does 30 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Its GX attack does 50 damage times the amount of damage on your opponent's, on your opponent's Pokemon, times the number of damage counters on, the, on your opponent's Pokemon. So, like, it's actually a really cool combination, right? Polar Spear does 50 damage, so... Um, say that you Frozen Bullet, you Guzma up a Pokemon that had the 30 damage, then you hit that one, the Polar Spear, that's 150 damage, so 150 plus 30 is 180, maybe you have a Choice Band attached, that's 210. Knocks out a lot of really relevant Pokemon, so it is really cool. And then you can play this deck with a lot of different things, like, I'm gonna try it with so many things, like, the first things that come to mind, right, is a just straight Glaceon build, maybe you play Zorak with it, just for consistency purposes. I like that. Maybe Glaceon Ninetales, because you put things in the range of Ninetales' attack. Uh, it's just a really good attack in general. It synergizes really well with Ninetales because you play the same attack cost. You're sniping everywhere. That's something, right? Uh, maybe you play Decidueye Glaceon. Uh, you cut the Zorak line to like a 2-2, two -two, and then you uh, increase the Glaceon line a little bit. I'm on the fence about how I feel about that one. Because then, like, you're most likely not going to be able to get Glaceon turn 1 unless you really focus on playing like a 4 Maybe a 4-2 split, because you don't really want that many Glaceons in the deck. You just want to have the active one. So maybe you play four Eevees, um, and then you play lots of, like, four Floatstones, things like that. Who knows? Um, that way you can get your Glaceon out, turn one, a little bit more often than not. That could be something worth looking into. Then you just have to switch to Water Energies and only attack with Glaceon and Zoark. I mean, most of the time you're only attacking with Zoark anyways, but you're not going to be able to use a Deciduized GX attack unless you play, like, that one of grass or maybe a one of rainbow or something like that. But if you play rainbow, you can't evolve your EV into Glaceon playing rainbow because it has to be a basic water, I believe. I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure that's correct. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with Glaceon. You can play Glaceon Disruption with like hammers and things like that. There, there's so many things you can do with Glaceon. So I'm actually really excited to see how Glaceon shakes up the meta as well as the metal stuff. I'm always down for a nice little shake. You know what I mean? We got Rotom here. We got two Water Rotoms. This is Rotom Wash. This is the damage one your for your opponent's bench Pokemon. It's probably the weakest one, but it's, it's cool, I guess. Um, let's look at the artwork. Look at that artwork. This man is very upset. Are you okay, dude? <laughs> I hope he's okay. Poor guy. We got Frost Rotom. This one's okay. He's pretty happy. He's in the refrigerator. He's like, he's chilling in the snow. Um, does 10 damage. Attack does 20 more damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's Pokemon. So that's a really cool way to punish your opponent. Uh... Like 20 damage for each energy they attach. That's really cool, actually. I'm not going to lie. Although, you're probably not doing that many that much damage because your opponent can play around it. Um, but it's something worth mentioning is that all these Rotoms have different names, which I didn't really think about until just now. So if you wanted to, you could play four Frost Rotoms, four Wash Rotoms. Like, you could play large counts of Rotoms. So I'm actually really excited about that. Uh, we have Manaphy here. Uh, search your deck, discard pile for five energy. Put them, in your, uh, put them into your deck. So whatever. Electabuzz. Brrr. I think it was great, right? I think I just butchered that. We got Electivire, 140 HP. That's so weird. Everything else is at like 130. Uh, it's a text or whatever. I just want to move on to Shinx, honestly. And I want to make this video a little bit short. It's already been 45 minutes. Uh, we have Shinx here, 50 HP Pokemon, which is pretty bad, but it's very, very interesting. It, ha it has synergizes really well with all its other Pokemon. This Pokemon can evolve the turn it was it was played if it's your first if it's the first turn of your opponent going if you're of your of the player going second. I'm sorry. So. It's kind of weird, right? Because like, if you were to play this Luxray, Luxio item lock deck that's going on, guess kind of spoilers. Um, 
kind of want to go second because then you could attack and item lock your opponent like sooner rather than later. Uh, but it's pretty interesting uh, being able to go, being able to evolve right away into this Luxio. We're not even going to look at this. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it's not even nearly as cool. Luxio over here, item locks, disconnect, 30 damage. Your opponent can't play any item from, uh, cards from their hand to from their hand during their next turn. Now, that's really cool because you can item lock the balls there again. Like I get rid of it. Oh my god, go away. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> item lock's not very good in standard, in my opinion. Uh, that's why you don't see Norvins running around. Obviously, Norvin has a harder setup time, which is another reason why you don't see Norvins running around. But um, it's still something worth mentioning. Like if your opponent plays rare candy, they can't play rare candies easily, which means they have a harder time evolving. Uh, you're only doing 30 30 damage and you're only and you only have 80 HP, but you also have a Luxray here. So because you have a Luxray, my first thought is play um, Shining Selby because that means you have the ability to uh, use this attack as a Luxray, and its ability is really dope as well. Uh, as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's active Pokemon attacks do 30 less damage. So you're taking less damage. You have 150 HP. It's not bad at all. Voltage Arrow, discard all lightning energy attached to this Pokemon. This attack does, 100, does 150 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So it's like a last resort knockout, I guess. It's not even that bad, though, because like even if you discard all your energies, you just attach another one next turn and keep using Disconnect until you can set up a Voltage Arrow again. So overall, it's a very powerful combo. So definitely something to look out for. I'm not, once again, I'm not too sure how I feel about it, especially now that we have Cynthia as well as N Sycamores, Bridget's, and things like that. So I'm still in the air about how much I like it, but it is something worth mentioning. It is pretty dope. I do like the idea of it. Moving on. Pachirisu, you can use Nuzzle, I guess. If you want to play the non 70 HP Pikachu, it's something worth mentioning if you want to play Raichu. But I think the 70 HP Pikachu is a little bit too important to play this Pachirisu. But who knows? I could be wrong. We have the other Rotom here. Once again, same thing as the other, other Rotoms. It does uh, 120 damage. So that's really cool, actually. Uh, nice big attacker. You can knock things out for weakness, like Celesteela. Moving on, though. Drifloon with the knit look. That is so creepy, bro. <laughs> look at you. He's like, he's like, I'm here to take your kids. I'm literally here to take your kids. We have Drifloon here. <laughs> is it weird that I said that? I mean, That is Drifloon's, like, that's his Pokedex energy. Don't blame me. Blame the Pokedex. Drift Bloom, uh, damage transport, move four damage counters from each of your from each of your Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. Like it's really strong in that sense, but ideally you don't really have damage on your Pokemon. <laughs> and like I guess you can pair it. <sighs> Excuse me, it's like really late at night when I'm recording this. Ideally you can pair it with like <clears throat> what is it? A uh, po what's up, Potown? Potion puts three damage counters on all your Pokemon, and you just move all those damage counters to your active Pokemon. Po 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 you do that once a game, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Spirit Tomb's pretty dope. I do like Spirit Tomb a lot here in this deck. Uh, did I peek the audio? I hope I didn't. Whatever. Um, Spirit Tomb has... It's a really, really versatile card because it's colors attack. No weakness, no resistance. So that's pretty dope as well. Uh, one retreat, which is also pretty dope because you're only going to have one energy attached to this Pokemon. That has two very good attacks. Search your de discard pile for two support cards and put them into your hand. That's really cool. Um, it's like Lusamine, but an attack. And Lusamine is already a slow card, so attacking is like just a slow. So. <laughs> Melody. The Pokemon Pokemon is a basic Pokemon. The Pokemon can't attack during your opponent's next turn. So once again, you can, first of all, if your opponent's playing an all basic attack attacking deck, you can Melody and then stall. Or you can use this to get a supporter card and... You know, get Guzmas, Acerolas, Sycamores, Ends, whatever you need into your hand. So I think everybody should at least get one or two of these. <clears throat> if there's like, oh, like whenever I do my, uh, I forget what I called it, um, the Buyer Bulk. Whenever I do my Buyer Bulk series about this set, I tell you right now, Spirit Team's worth getting. <laughs> buyer Bulk will come probably January, like late January. I know people like the Buyer Bulk series. Uh, I'm just kind of talking about cards for now. Skaroopy. I want to talk about the artwork as groupie. Look at this. Look at this. Kayao kawaii. <laughs> I totally screwed that up, bro. I'm so tired. It's kawaii, bro. Kawaii. Uh, dozu, I think is what it is. I'm not that much of a weeb. <laughs> Dredig Drapion, not Dredigan. It paralyzes the point. It's for four psychic energies. Yikes. Moving on. Krogunk and Toxic Croak. I know it's one of Spaceborg's favorite Pokemon is Krogunk. So, uh, settle the score. 50 damage if your opponent's exit. If, if any of your fighting Pokemon are knocked out, this does 70 more damage. Super yikes. Giratina, uh, if you're a Lunala fan, I know I have a couple of subscribers that are Lunala fans. I'm also a Lunala fan, but like, 
This is cool if you're a Lunala fan, right? Uh, you can attach two psychic energies from your hand to this Pokemon. So if you have a lot of energies in hand, that's a way to like put energies on the board. Crisis dive does 160 damage. It's not the attack is not as interesting as it is in Sokaleo, just because like you have Lunala that can attack and move energies and have a lot of HP and not lose energies when attacking. This one loses energies and does 160 damage. I guess if you absolutely need to do 160 damage, it does the same thing where you pressure your opponent <clears throat> and they have to deal with you, that kind of thing. So I guess that's cool. But I mean, like to me, the card is not good except for whenever you need to put psychic energies on the board. So you play this one Giratina when you have psychic energies in your hand. And then you attach your psychic energies from your hand onto the board, and then you like continue with your turn. You can still manual attach as well. So there's all that benefit to it. So I do like Giratina for that aspect. Other than that, though, it's whatever. We have Crescent Moon turn, Cresselia. Turn, discard an energy from this Pokemon. Switch all damage counters on this Pokemon with those on your opponent's active Pokemon. Those so damage change, but like <clears throat> on Cresselia, which is not good because that's low HP number. So. It has Psychic as well, so all these Pokemon have Psychic nowadays, bro. We got Lunala Star, Prism, whatever you want to call it. I like this card. It does the same thing as Solgaleo. It kind of fills the same role as well. It's just not as good as um, as uh, Solgaleo just because it's weak to dark, and being weak to dark means badness because of, Sol uh, because of Zoark. But it does attach a bunch of energies. So once again, this is another one of those cards you want to play in that Lunala deck. <laughs> I talk about Lunala a lot. I just really like Lunala decks, bro. I want Lunala to be good. That's all I want, man. Is that so much to ask? I really like Lunala. Science Storm is really powerful as well. 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon in play. Uh, I know people like... I know that there's that... What's it called? <clears throat> Delphox that does the attack. And it's always hilarious when that work, deck works. So now you have a basic Pokemon that can do that attack. And you're going to at least be able to do 80 damage, right? And then you have to have... If, you're, if you are playing Lunala, I'm just saying, if you're playing that Giratina, that's all I'm just saying. There's... Nah. <laughs> Dawnwings and Cosmos is super dope. I wish I wasn't weak to Dark. I wish you were weak. This, this is one of the few times where I wish you were weak to Psychic. Why weren't you weak to Psychic? My god. Uh, Dawnwings and Cosmos GX has Russian. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon's on your bench, you may switch the Pokemon with your active Pokemon. That's actually super cool. You play that with Floatstone. Um, <laughs> and then you uh, have a Pokemon that can retreat as much as you want. You can play this in literally any, any deck. If the text on that, great. My Flash of Darkness is only 120, which is super weak. 180 HP, 180 damage. I mean, this, this attack can only be used if you have more prize cards. Once again, you have to be losing. Prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. That's super cool. If you're weak, um, you can Clips and Moon GX, take a knockout, and then, like, your opponent can't damage you. They have to knock out something else. So that's actually super dope. But overall, meh. Although, I will say that maybe this card kind of replaces the Stadium card. Um... And like Lunala decks. <laughs> I'm still talking about Lunala decks. Bro. Moving on, we gotta stop it. Cranidos and Rampardos are pretty dope, and by Cranidos, I mean only Rampardos. 150 HP Pokemon, which is such an awkward HP number, but whatever. Clean hit, 60 damage, and if it's an evolution Pokemon, does 60 more damage. So let's think about this attack, right? 60 damage, 120 damage, with Choice Band, that's 140, with a. Not, not Choice Band, with Strong Energy, it's 140, with Choice Band, it's 170. It's not good enough. <laughs> You'll never knock out an evolution Pokemon as far as I'm aware. And that's like they're non-GX evolution Pokemon. Wild Bomber is really cool though. If your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, it is knocked out. So that's really cool. Just keep knocking out ladies for three energies. And you don't discard energies, which is something worth mentioning because like these are the kind of attacks that like make you discard energies, but you don't have to. Oh my god, look at how handsome this little boy is. This is a, this is a good little boy. He's a good doggo. Look at the good little doggo. 70 HP. Uh, with Detect, which is not bad at all. So I think it's the Riolo 2 play. I actually have a stack of Riolos here. And I'm going to look at them real quick to see if there's any other better. Yeah, I have stacks of Riolos. I have stacks of Riolos and Tokabees. This, this one actually also has 70 HP from uh, Burning Shadows. But, like, the tax aren't as good. Uh, I'm looking at all these cards. Because these are, like, cards I'm planning on giving away to subscribers that donate. Like, I can sign them and send them to people. Is there any other Riolos from, like, previous sets that I need to look at? This one has 60 HP, so it's already not as good. The other ones have 60 HP. Actually, this one has 70, but it's double smash. All right, cool. No, no, no. This is the best Riolu. Play this Riolu. <clears throat> because Lucario here is that boy. <laughs> Lucario is really cool. I This is, spoiler alert, whenever this set comes out, this is the first deck I'm profiling in the channel. I'm sorry. I kind of have to. Like, I can do all the metal stuff later. But look at, so, look at Lucario, man. Ah, <laughs> he's so, like, he's just like, yeah. <laughs> oh, my. I want to make so many inappropriate jokes, but I shouldn't. Or a sight, dude. That should just change this to bomb, and like we can call it a day. I can retire after that. What's during your turn? If you have a Garchomp in play, you may search your deck for one card and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. And yes, this attack, this ability does stack. <clears throat> which means if you have multiple cards, that you can get multiple, uh, multiple 
this card from your deck per turn. It's really cool in like a like a deck like this too, because if you once you have one Garchomp set up and you have a Lucario set up, you can start easily getting a setup after that and get puzzles, rare candies. Um, maybe you can get those four Clover pieces. I'm not doing that, by the way. <laughs> and like once you have four Lucarios, you can just take a prize every turn. You know what I mean? If you can figure out a way to shuffle the puzzles back into you, whatever. Uh, regardless, <clears throat> you can get your DCs for the turn, so you can attack with Garchomp, which we'll go over later. You can get your uh, <coughs> Excuse me. You can get your um, rare candies to evolve into Garchomp's easier. You can get your strong energies. Uh, you can get your supporter for the turn. You can get your Cynthia, Guzmans, things like that. So I'm actually a big fan of Lucario. I wish I had more XP. I wish it did more damage. I wish I had free retreat. But for now, I I'm happy with you. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Hippopotas, uh, last ditch tackle. 50 if you have three or fewer cards in your deck, there's 130 damage. So you can hit for 180 if you're running out of cards in your deck. That's kind of wild. The attack cost is too much though. Hippopodon, Hippowdon, I'm sorry. <laughs> Evolves from Hippopop, Potato, Tato, Hippo, 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 Poto, To, 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 Tas. All right, bro. <laughs> uh, 50 damage, yada, yada. Sandstorm Cannon. That sounds, that sounds terrifying. Hippopod, Hippowdon, <laughs> Hippowdon, you Sandstorm Cannon. That sounds terrifying. It's like this 10 more damage to each energy and your opponent's active Pokemon's retreat cost. That sounds terrifying. Basimian. Basimian's really cool, right? 100, uh, does, has 110 HP. Um, as long as this Pokemon is on your bench, each of your Basimian's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active evolved Pokemon. Hmm. That's kind of weird. I guess you can do 60 extra damage. I believe the... <sighs> okay, so if you're doing 60 extra damage and the and the Basimian that attacks for 120, if you have all four Basimian's down, you can hit for 180 on evolved Pokemon. It's still not great. I don't know how useful this is. I don't think it's useful at all. Because you're still not getting the... Are you, you're you not getting two at KOs, are you? I'm going to look this up real quick. Pissimian. Uh, TCG. I got to... I don't remember... For like... Uh, uh, sure. Can we... I just want to look at it. Let me just look at it. All right. Team play does 10 plus 30 damage. Yeah, so you're hitting for 130. So if you have two of the other <clears throat> Pissimians down. If you, I'm trying to more damage for you. Okay, so I'm trying to think. So if you have all four Pissimians, right? You hit for 130. And you're doing 30 extra damage if you have like two of these Pissimians, right? Because you have to play two to split. That's kind of risky if you don't. So, um... 130, 160, 190. Uh, with a choice band, you're hitting for 220. Okay, so there's there's that usefulness. That lets you knock out things like Galispod. Um, you're still a little bit short from knocking out, uh, what's it called? Um, Gardevoir. If you play like one Regirock, I guess you could do it. Okay, so there's kind of use for this card. All right, that's something, okay. I just wanted to make sure I understood like how useful that card was. Simian decks are still not good though. <laughs> I will throw that out there. We got Gibble, 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 Gibble. This one has Ascension. So this is the only one worth playing. I know it only has 50 HP and it's weak to Dairy, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it has Ascension. That's what matters. You know what else has Ascension? Gabby has Ascension. So, you know, getting out that getting out that guard job, it's not too hard. Uh, because whether you go first or second, it's not that bad. Because you can rare candy guard chomp or you can ascension if you're going second. Um, unfortunately, you only have 80 HP. I wish I had a little bit more HP just so you can survive hits easier. And you have to get a fighting energy, which is not bad. You probably don't play strong energy in like a deck like this just because you're probably never attacking with Lucario. Because guard chomp is such a decent attacker. 150 HP is not great though. Look at my girl Cynthia in the back. Um, Cynthia is my favorite Poke Girl in case you guys were curious she literally has the greatest team of all time full of nothing but the sexiest pokemon we got lucario and tokis in the same team my girl cynthia knows what's up <laughs> 150 hp being weak to fairy is not a big deal 150 hp kind of is though it's not that great but it has really cool attacks specifically the champion blade fighting dc which once again if you have lucario set up it's not hard to set up because you can get the energies from your deck directly um it's also really cool right because like in a deck like this you actually don't even have to play sycamore you could just play Four ends, four Cynthia's. Play your pal pads. You never really need Sycamore. Um, that's, a, that's something worth talking about, like right. And then you can play like two or three bridges. That's that's really cool. I have to look into that. Um, 
Champion Blade does 100 damage. If you played Cynthia from your hand during this turn, this attack does 100 more damage. Once again, Lucario can get it. You, if you play Palpad, you can put the Cynthia's back and then use Lucario to get the uh, Cynthia. And doing 200 damage, 230 with the Choice Band is actually super dope. The only thing that sucks about it is that you can't play Guzma at the same time. So maybe this is one of those decks that you could consider playing Escape Rope in. Man, I'm, I'm about to revolutionize, bro. We are out here. We, we are out here. <laughs> and then 50 damage is 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So if you don't really get a chance to set up, it's whatever. It's just like, I don't know, man. I have to, I have to test build this deck for sure. Palkia GX is pretty cool. Um, not in standard, <laughs> but expanded is something, right? You can play Archie Box with it. You have Hydro Pressure, 60 damage, and there's 20 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. So, uh... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, man, I'm dying. Uh, I hope that I cut that out. Um, I've been talking for a long time, but it's already been an hour. Um, 60 damage, uh, yada, yada, yada. It, it does more damage than Keldeo. So by 10, but that 10 actually is really, really huge in a lot of situations. So I guess you still play Keldeo for its ability, but you also play this Palkia. It gives you a different weakness as well, so that's pretty dope. Spatial Control, move any number of energy cards from your bench Pokemon to this Pokemon. Eh. Zero Vanish, 150 damage, your opponent shuffles all energy attached to their Pokemon into their deck. Whoa, that's actually crazy. And now that I'm looking at it, that's actually really cool. Um, it's really hard to pull off. Unless you're playing Archer Box, of course. But like, if you can force your opponent to put all their energies on the board back into their deck, that's crazy. It's not something that's very practical. You're not going to be able to use this attack very easily, especially in standard, which sucks because this is a really good attack. If it was like three water energies, I would 100% play this. You can't. That's the other thing that I have to talk about, though. You can't Aqua Patch into this Pal uh, Palkia. It's not a water type. You have to like spatial control into Zero Vanish, which is really bad because it's like that's a lot of setup for something that like you can't guarantee will get pulled off. So. Moving on, we got Low Punny, La Punny. Do you guys say Low Punny or La Punny? I've always said Low Punny. I don't know which way is the proper way to say it. I think it is La Punny. I don't know. Some of them know in the comments. Um, and then shuffle this Pokemon card attachment to your deck for DC. Oh, that's kind of dope. I wish it paralyzed. <laughs> Could you imagine like having this? It's like it's like Excel Gore, but like without the poison. Ah, oh, I wish, man, man. You know what? Dreams. The other Shaman. Call for family. Use that for two bases. Put them onto your bench. That's not bad. Um. Young Goose, Gumshoes, I'm just, I'm reading it. You guys can read along, but there's nothing cool about it. That's a, <laughs> that's a dopey looking Pokemon, guys. <laughs> you got good old Gumshoes here. Uh, your opponent reveals their hand. If there's any Pokemon in there, this attack is 80 damage. 80 more damage, I should say, so you can hit for 100. It's whatever. Drampa. Drampa, that's a hollow. That's cool. 20 damage, attack is 20 damage, plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Oh, it has outrage. Uh, and then Dragon Pulse, just whatever. Order pad. Order pad is really interesting. Um, there's not many decks I can see order pad being worth fitting in. Maybe rare candy decks, but that's about it. Uh, flip a coin to head, search your deck for an item card reveal and put it into your hand. Maybe if you're one of those guys that really, really, really want Ultra Ball turn one, you could play order pad for Ultra Ball. Uh, if you really want Ultra Ball turn one, but uh, like it's it's interesting. We'll see. I don't know how good it is. All I know is that it's it's, it's cool. I guess. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I, don't, I don't really see many people being able to fit this card into their deck. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Maybe if you're like a rare candy deck player and you absolutely need to like get your rare candy as much as possible, you play your four rare candies, your four order pads, your four ultra balls. You just go maximum consistency, bro. And then you clunk up because you played a lot of those cards and you just don't get the Pokemon. Pepperonis, uh, ultra ball reprint, a crushing hammer, the fossil again. Looker's whistle. Search your deck for two Looker cards. Whatever. Rare candy reprint. Rescue stretcher. Escape board. This means we're not getting Flowstone back, in my opinion. And I'm really sad about that because Flowstone's crazy. I touch a Pokemon tool for one of your Pokemon that already doesn't already have a Pokemon tool attached to it. It's one of those things where like, it's cool. Like, the retreat cost of Pokemon. I don't know why I read this part, but the retreat cost of the Pokemon this tool is attached to is a colorless, colorless less. The Pokemon may own, may retreat while sleep or paralyzed. Uh. It's cool. I mean, how often you put to sleep and or sleep or paralyzed in standard, right? Eh. It's one retreat. I wish it was like two retreat less. If it was two retreat less, I'm 100% down with this card. But it's one retreat less. That means like cards like Zoark, you have to attach an energy to retreat. What? That's lame. Whatever. Cynthia, shove your hand and draw six. Super dope. <clears throat> My opinions of this card still stands. I don't think it's an end replacement, but it is one of those cards where you can kind of play N as more of a disruption card as opposed to like shuffle draw, and then you could play Cynthia as your shuffle draw card. You know what I mean? So I'm a big fan of Cynthia. Um, <coughs> excuse me again. Um, 
I am just a big fan of Cynthia. It's gonna give me three at the very least. Volknir, switch your deck for an item card and lightning energy. Shuffle them and reveal them. It's not that great. <clears throat> I don't know how useful it is. Uh, yeah, it's like to me, it's very similar to Steven. Like, I guess you're getting an item card, which is better. Uh, it's it's like a better Skyla, right? In my opinion, but it's also like it's like a better Skyla and a better Steven. But you don't play Steven in all the decks, so whatever. Looker, draw three cards from the bottom of your deck. Once again, I did talk about Orangiru setting up with Looker. It's a lot of setup. Your opponent can end you. Uh, meh. I don't think it's worth it. Sophocles reprint. Super boost energy. I don't like it. <clears throat> I'll tell you right now. It's a singular rainbow energy. Um, this card provides... No, it's not even a rainbow energy. It's a, it's a colorless energy. While attached to a stage 2 Pokemon, this card provides... Every, okay, so it's a rainbow energy to stage 2s. But... Um, if you have three or more stage two Pokemon in play, this card provides every energy type, but provides four at a time. So, I guess you could play like a one of in the I mean, obviously you have to play a one of, but like, like what decks are this, is this super useful for? Like, <clears throat> I guess Sogaleo. It's a one energy attack that can do big damage, but they have the full setup. Uh, Decidueye and, um, uh, Gardevoir. I guess overall, you have to have three stage twos, which is not exactly the easiest thing to do, especially if your opponent pressures you. And like... You can just be e hammered. <laughs> you can just be e hammered, which is like hilarious to me. But eh, overall, like it's not exactly the best card in the world. Whatever, we'll move on. Uh, beautiful. Look at her. Look at her. Ah, dude. Dude, come to me. Anyways, um, that's it, guys. Uh, this has been an hour and ten minutes almost. So uh, thank you guys all for watching. If you stuck through, if you guys stuck through to the end of the video, um, let me know with the hashtag. Um, what's a good hashtag? Hashtag Cynthia's Bay. Yeah, because Cynthia is Bay, bro. Let me know the hashtag Cynthia's Bay uh, <laughs> if you watch this whole video. Shout out to you guys. Drop a like if you have not already. Subscribe, share all that good jazz. I'm really excited. Uh, I know that like I'm terrified because I'm not too sure like how um, how the format is going to shape up with all this new metal support and Glaceon being a thing, but I'm also excited to see what's going to happen. Drop a like if you haven't already, subscribe, show all the good, ja good jazz, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.